it had only been six planetary rotations. That is all the time it took from the time that this new species had seemed to come out of nowhere and break the back of the blockade of the truck. The truck were a species very interested in holding on to whatever planets were near their territory, not necessarily in their territory, but forcing their will on others. They wanted to blockade the planet and force them into submission, although this planet was self-sustaining, so they couldn't do much. They did not want to risk an invasion, as that would bring war between the two species. But a single planet surrendering their control to the truck, well, that was something altogether different. They had blocked all communication so that all the distress calls that came out from the planet were simply blocked or ricocheted back towards the planet itself. This made many on the surface wary, as many of them could see the flotilla that went around their planet. Even in the daytime, they would look up and see a few small dots way out in the sky as the truck would do simple flybys, never firing, as that would break into full-on war. They wanted to take this planet without bringing large destroyers in. The truck wanted to do this with the least assets as possible. They were all about taking over the commerce of a planet. That is what they wanted as they knew that if they controlled the commerce of a planet, it didn't matter what species controlled it. They would not care, as they would have control over all of it, and would be able to force the local magistrate, or in this case, the local queen, to do their bidding whenever they chose. The locals were nervous about this, because they knew if the queen did surrender the planet, then they would most likely be taken as slaves. They did not do well as slaves, as their species, the Shang Yu, were very thin, even by galactic standards. They were not good for physical labor, but they were good for house slaves and for pleasure slaves. The queen shuddered at the idea as she looked out across her own people. She realized that when this new group of ships came in, they had not actually responded to distress calls. They were there for another reason altogether. They were surprised when the transmission actually broke through the truck jamming. It was a simple message asking if they wanted to start trade with this new species. The queen remembers reading this report and listening to the message once it had been translated. She was just absolutely astounded at this. This new species that had barely begun to reach out into the stars, barely 12 of her solar rotations prior, was now reaching out for commerce, but they were very far away from this species' home planet. This wasn't even in the normal trade routes. How, why were they here? But she would not, in any way, shape, or form, risk losing the chance to bring in another species, as this would force the truck to reconsider their blockade all entirely, and they would be able to open up gaps which would allow the queen and her advisors to reach out to every other planet, to all the other queens and kings, to see if they would respond to help force the truck to back away. Though the Shang Yu were skinny, they were definitely ones who had engineering prowess enough to make their ships very formidable. However, it was not as formidable as what she had seen. They watched in absolute amazement, catching all the transmissions that came out. The truck demanded that these ships back away and leave. This was their territory. The response they got was that of confusion. Those on board claimed that they knew where the territorial boundaries were. They understood that this, what they were doing, was a breach of all intergalactic treaties. The truck didn't seem to care, and in a flex of their own firepower, they brought in the four destroyers that were on the other side of the planet. It only took about three hours for them to go from one side to the other, and then formed a battle line. They were ready to fight off this half a dozen ships that had come out. These large, bulbous flying bricks that didn't seem to be much, simply sat there as they continued to go back and forth to the truck eventually, demanding that this new species surrender their ships 
as their ships had finally been scanned and realized they had many, many articles of goods. Their response was simple. They were asked, are you trying to pirate our goods? This word did not translate. What the hell was pirate? Eventually, the translator did come out with a good enough translation that the truck simply laughed and said, yes, we have jammed you. You cannot jump. You will surrender or we will simply destroy your ships and take the cargo. This was, of course, an empty threat, because if you fire on any ship in the ether and blow it up, you destroy exactly what you're trying to get. Those on the other side seem to wait a long time before responding. When they finally did, the response was simple and straightforward. If you want it, come and take it. I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker, came from a second voice in the transmission right before it cut out. This surprised everyone, as they didn't understand what mating someone's own parental figure had to do with anything. But the truck didn't care. They began to move their destroyers into weapons range, effective weapons range, so they could get a good shot. And if they were fortunate, they'd be able to take out the bridge. But then they started scanning the nose of the ship and they realized that the bridge was not where they thought it would be. They scanned it again and again and again and eventually found that there was a lot of electromagnetic interference. They couldn't scan any deeper than the inner hull. How was this possible? They didn't know. The Shang Yu on the surface tried to scan as well, but couldn't get past the truck defense line. The jamming was still in place, so all they could do was rely on the visuals. Eventually, this new group of six ships seemed to move themselves into a formation, also creating a battle line. The truck destroyers didn't even wait at that point until they were in optimal firing range before they readied their weapons, and with that they saw something they didn't expect. These seemingly flying bricks, these bulbous piles of, well, excrement that they looked like, seemed to raise turrets from all sides, and also seemed to be opening up part of its hull. From the hull, other ships actually popped out from the side and flew out. Everyone was confused as fighter combat went away a long time ago as soon as point defense systems became a thing. They were confused at this, but then they looked at the ships that came out. These were not any sort of ships. These were at least the size of small frigates or large corvettes. They couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. Each of these ships joined the battle line on the sides. It was some sort of formation. But then the truck, one of the destroyers, fired. Fired straight towards one of these ships and watched in horror as their energy weapons deflected harmlessly off the bulbous nose. And with that, all the ships in the unknown formation turned their cannons and fired. And that destroyer was no more simply pierced from one side to the other. All the ordnance that went through, the ballistic ordnance that they used mainly, punched clean through and ended up heading straight towards the planet. Although, because it had passed through the ship, it was tumbling, oddly tumbling, and though most of the ordnance they fired landed with a massive thud, it did not cause too much damage unless it landed in a residential neighborhood, which only came close. With that, the truck armed all three of their remaining destroyers and brought the rest of their fleet in to the point that they had opened up a line so that the Sheng Yu could reach out to the stars and call for help. And as soon as they screamed out that they were being blockaded, that they were being attempted to be starved out by the trucks, it seemed to trigger something because all the unknown fleet ships began to fire with reckless abandonment. And the Sheng Yu on the surface received another message. We got you now. Don't worry. We'll protect you. 
Everyone on the surface was confused. Why would an unknown species do that? And yet they looked through all the optical sensors, and all they saw was these six ships that had now tripled in number, firing main guns, all staying in line as they approached, then seemingly altering themselves so they encapsulated the final rest of the Troc ships. The few that remained at that point tried desperately to reach into FTL, but it seemed as though their FTL engines just would not activate. Some of them skipped across space, but you can't do that without the right type of inertial dampening systems. Without the correct bubble to go around you, there's nothing left inside except slimy goo that's all around the bulkheads. With that, the rest of the truck ships went adrift. If they had not been perforated, they had accidentally killed the crew inside. With this, the ships that were out there, the unknown fleet, began to send out more ships, many of them, seemingly insect-like things. It was clear that these were not actually manned, as there was no place for a cockpit. And yet they seemed to start gathering up all the ships that were out there, all the truck ships, and bring them to one spot. It seemed as though they were merging them together, using strange pieces of metal and seemingly heat to merge them, holding them together as one. Those that had tried to jump were simply collected in one area and then linked to one of the Bulva ships. The Sheng Yu didn't understand, but began to call up, Who are you? They responded, We're from humanity. Have you not heard of humans? With this, even the queen, as pale as she is, lost the little bit of blood that was still in her face. She was amazed at this, as she had barely heard of them, and then simply asked, Can, can we start trade negotiations now? It was a bit undignified the way she said it, yet she was in shock, but she would not let this opportunity go to waste. The humans surprisingly called back and asked if any other humans had been there before, as they seemed confused at the whole idea that this planet had never even seen a human before. The queen responded back with the fact that the way their culture is, and the fact that they were blockaded, they knew nothing about humans or human culture or how they had expanded. She had learned from one of the human captains that called in that humanity had been trading with their people for several months now. They were confused. The advisors warned that a species so dangerous might not be something they want to piss off, so it might be a good idea to send up an envoy. The queen herself said that she would go up and talk to them to work out trade negotiations between her planet and their species. The humans were a little confused. We already have something. We're transmitting it now. The queen saw this and realized that her planet was not listed within the planets that had signed, and she realized that she had to work out her own negotiations for the best interest of her planet, which was understandable. But this caused the humans to actually pause. They realized that if this was diplomatic negotiations, they did not have standings to do so. The queen said that she would come up and talk to whatever diplomatic envoy would be showing up. The humans simply responded, We already called them. Four days. And that was two days after the battle. At this point, she was getting inside her transport and getting ready to go up to meet the humans. She knew that their delegation would be arriving within the hour it would take for her to reach beyond the gravity well of her planet. She was interested, very interested, but she was also nervous. She kept priming and preening herself, pushing down the pressed skin. She looked to make sure that her dress was absolutely perfect, as this would be the very first time to meet them face to face, and she wanted to make the best of impressions. One of her advisors joined her on the flight. He had been tasked with finding out everything that had happened with the humans and her species, and the advisor was very quick to say, Mistress, you must take special care when dealing with these humans. Things have been strange. 
he said this, as the doors closed and they sat down, getting ready to go into space to meet the envoys. Explain, Strange. He went on to explain how the humans, though very large and very muscular, tend to be very kind, although it is dangerous to make them angry. If they are angry, or in some cases intoxicated, the queen had to understand what this was, and he explained that when they consume ethyl alcohol, which made her eyes go very wide, that that's poison, she said. Yes, the advisor said, but for some reason they can ingest large quantities of it and they enjoy it. However, it changes their temperament. She sat back trying to ponder this, and the advisor continued. He explained that many of them had gotten interested in the species. Interested how, she would ask. He went to explain that humans find their form very appealing, extremely appealing. The queen seemed to grin at this, almost smug-like, believing that she could simply use her own femininity to get more of what she wanted, a better deal for her planet. She again began to press out her dress to make sure that it was absolutely perfect, seamless, without any stains of any kind. She went to make sure that the decorations on her tendrils were absolutely perfect and shining the way they should be. Some of them even had some sort of LED attached to the end to make them glow. She realized that she had to make the absolute best impression to show off to the males as she knew that a female would always have to show her best to a male to make sure he was completely interested. And once she got a hold of them, she believed that once she mates one of them, she would have complete control as that was the way it was done. She would have everything. The advisor continued to go on how humans were able to bring all sorts of cargo extremely fast. Their manufacturing and engineering capabilities were on a completely another level. She believed this to be true as she had seen the battle firsthand. She talked about how six of their destroyers had come in and destroyed an entire troc battle group without taking a single loss how they even brought their own support craft and even picked up the mess afterwards. It was incredibly efficient, and she appreciated that very much. She always knew efficiency was important, especially in a malarkey like hers. She listened more to what the advisor had to say as he fumbled through different words that she didn't quite understand. Different things until he said things like capsaicin, where she immediately started to flinch. Even the idea of capsaicin was enough to make her worried. She wanted to know why he had mentioned something so dangerous, and he mentioned how humans consume that as well. She wondered if they were partly biomechanical or something to handle something so dangerous. Even a little bit of that is enough to cause extreme chemical burns on her skin. She looked at her own skin to make sure it was still as flawless as ever, and she worried that if she got any on herself, she might end up not looking good enough to put her impressions forward. The advisor continued to talk and talk, which made the queen more and more apprehensive and nervous, but she believed that all she had to do was impress those that were coming through the delegation. She believed that she would be able to coerce them in one way or another. Perhaps she could even get one of their own royalty to fall under her sway. And then perhaps, just maybe, she would be able to hold humanity by its small and tenders. She thought this with a mischievous grin on her face. The advisor looked at her knowing exactly what she was thinking about, and he was very worried. He tried to warn the queen not to do such a crazy thing, as even considering getting in some sort of matrimony with a human or any other species beside her own would look terrible. 
And not to mention, she didn't know exactly what she was dealing with. Perhaps their own bodies might leach one of the fluids that they're so delicate to. The queen did not even say anything, as she told the advisor to shut his mouth for the rest of the flight, which was only going to take another ten minutes before they got to the rendezvous point. Once they did, she was there and was finally able to get up out of her seat and look out to see what the human delegation had brought. The ship that she looked at was absolutely massive. It dwarfed her yacht, so much so that she thought that she could just have her crew go into one of the torpedo tubes to dock, although the torpedo tubes weren't that big. Her pilots maneuvered, as they were told, around to the side of the ship. As they went farther and farther, they realized the absolute massive size of this ship. She looked to see if this was some sort of battleship, but she didn't see many weapons on it. She saw many, many point defenses, but she didn't see many main guns. She was confused at this. She could hear the radio transmissions as those in control sent all the coordinates. As they went off to the side, they saw one of the bays open, and she saw humans standing in the bays. She wondered how they would not be pulled into the vastness of space. She saw a strange glow around the edge of it, and she couldn't understand. Then she heard that they were told to go no faster than a certain speed. She wondered why, but didn't push the matter. The shuttle itself got in position and slowly, very slowly, moved its way in. She was amazed at the idea that there was some sort of energy field there that they slowly passed through. It was though it was enveloping and cleansing the ship at the same time. And by the time the ship had got through the energy field and lowered itself onto the deck, with the magnetic clamps reaching out to grab a hold of it and pull it into position, also holding it in position, the doors had shut behind them with a loud thud, and the energy shield itself had turned off. She was absolutely astounded at the engineering of this. She couldn't wait to talk to them. She wondered if they would meet her right there, and as she went towards the back end, her own entourage was ready to introduce her to the humans. As the doors opened, she was not within view. It was the way of things. They would send those out before to announce her showing up and let everyone know of her importance as she moved forward. As she stepped out after her introduction, she turned herself sideways and basically presented herself in the most elegant and attractive way possible. She kept her head down and eyes almost completely closed, as was the custom for one presenting themselves. Then she looked forward, and if she had been able to mutter the phrase, oh shit, that's exactly what she would have done. But she was stunned. Several personnel stood in front of her, all in dress uniforms that covered most of their bodies. Many of them stood perfectly straight, some of them holding weapons, but those were towards the back. Others had some sort of shiny decoration on them. One stepped forward. She looked up at it. It seemed to be at least 20% taller than she was. And then it simply reached out a hand and said, Welcome aboard. With that, she didn't understand this. Was he not going to dance for her? Was he not going to kiss her feet? Was he not going to bow? This made her a little confused, as everyone else who had ever come before the queen had known that they must bow and scrape before her to gain her favor. But this one stood tall and above her. She looked as many shiny ornaments was on this clothing. But the clothing covered it. It was strange, as it was normal for her clothing to cover very little of themselves. In fact, that which draped her was excessive by her way. She remembered looking over at everyone around, and they seemed to cover themselves constantly. She looked at her own people, and it was as though they were wearing almost nothing. She again moved her body so that she would show her best assets off. And then she introduced herself as the queen of the Sheng Yu of this planet. Again, the man stood there with his hand out. 
waiting for her to take it. As she turned herself, still confused, she reached out to the hand, and he simply wrapped his hand around hers. She looked and she could see that they had an extra digit on their hand, which made her almost flinch at the idea. He simply squeezed her hand just enough to tighten it, but not enough to hurt. The massive hand then raised it and dropped it quick. Well, this way if you would please. He motioned his hand after letting go of hers, and then led her down a hallway. They both entered a room not soon after, and then she wondered what was going on. She was given different beverages and snacks, but she didn't touch them at first. She worried about this, and she had her associates dive into them. Many of them, as soon as they got a hold of the drinks and the food, took a small sip or a tiny little nibble, and within moments started shoving the food and drink into their face, seemingly uncontrollable of what they were eating. She couldn't understand this. And with that, uh, the human came in, the large one, the one that had shaken her hand. He saw what was going on, and you just heard, God damn it! She didn't understand why he was so angry at the time. He turned and yelled at his own subordinates. Something about addiction and caffeine and sugar and honey and things of that nature. She didn't understand these words. She understood what caffeine was and then realized there must have been caffeine in the beverages. They apologized profusely before removing all the dirty dishes, and she was glad that she did not partake in any of the food or drink, as she would have again shoved her face in as well, which is very undignified. She was again amazed at this. But as the large one sat down in front of her and began to introduce himself again, he brought out several different folders, and with mechanical precision, seemingly not caring about any of the formalities that is normal in her society. He simply showed, in her own language, the contract that all the other planets had signed. It was a trade deal, a trade contract, and also a diplomatic contract as well. Everything from non-aggression packs to how much tonnage can be brought in at a time per vehicle or per vessel, it didn't matter. She was amazed at why they were not just drooling over her. Why did they not sit there and kiss her feet? She tried to do an old trick from when she was young, and she reached under with her foot and rubbed up against the leg of the one in front of her. This seemed to get his attention, but only slightly. As she continued to do so, she very slightly went up higher and higher to the knee and seemed to rub it in a circle. He chuckled at this. She thought she was doing a good job. And then the man simply said, Ma'am, unlike you, that's not an erogenous zone, and I know what you're doing. What? She asked. The translator, of course, was only about a half a second behind. The human simply stated, yeah, the rest of the females of your planet have tried the same thing. A couple have succeeded, but only to get a couple of the privates and ensigns. If you're trying to get me, I'm sorry, ma'am. He holds up his hand and shows a small golden band that's around one of his digits. Sorry, I'm married. She didn't understand. She asked for clarification, and by the time he was even halfway done with his explanation, she realized what was going on. She wondered if for some way she could talk to his superior. And with that, he simply lowered his brow and said, you mean my senior? She was surprised at this and then simply asked if she could speak with their king. And with that, every human in the room began to bust out in a strange sound, some of them moving in a way that didn't actually make any noise. And it took a moment before any of them were actually able to get breath back into their lungs. As the one across the table was still chuckling and not able to talk, another one, who was there again in a very pressed and dressed uniform, but had seen some sort of symbols up and down its arm, 
simply stepped forward. Ma'am, we don't have royalty. What? She said again, this time with such a high tone that even her own people and the humans realized that she was completely dismayed. You can't just marry into a royal family anymore. We got rid of that shit a long time ago. But, but, I, um, um, this was the first time that her own royal court, her own entourage, had ever seen her stammer, as she was always so prim and proper when she spoke. They were amazed at this, that a new species, one that had shown absolutely no aggression at all, and it seemed to be completely fair, had made her stammer. It is... It, it must be because I'm so old, she said, lowering her head a little bit and seemingly slouch. It was to her surprise that one of those holding weapons in the back said, Wait, she's old? Are you free? That's not old. Was she, was she like 10, 20? What's a fucking dead right? And all sorts of different words coming out. The translator couldn't decipher between all of it. She was looking at them confused. And then the one in front of her was able to regain his composure and said, Ma'am, through our eyes, you are in the perfect age to mate with. In fact, if you wanted to, I guarantee one of these guys would take you in the other room and ravage you in ways that would make you squeal. That was something you don't say to royalty as she definitely blushed. For the, probably the first time in her life, her cheeks actually did turn a reddish blue purple. Many of her own court was again astonished by this, that anyone would even insinuate this. She was surprised, and yet, she was interested. So, would that help with negotiations? She said, and the court immediately gasped at the insinuation of this. No, it wouldn't cut you a better deal. It put a smile on your face, though. With that, she realized that one of the human females actually went up and tapped this man on the shoulder and gave him a unceremonious glare. It seemed as though they were talking without talking. And then he simply turned and said, but that's not what we're here to talk about. How about we get back to business? As we say in my world, business before pleasure. It was less than six hours before all the negotiations were done. She had been able to cut herself slightly better of a deal, considering how far out they were, and also a few of the resources within their own sector were very hard to find. So she was actually able to lay claim to them. The humans didn't seem to mind. In fact, they even offered them mining equipment to help them out, as this would help them as well. She was amazed by this, and on the way back down to her planet afterwards, she couldn't help but one be completely enamored with the idea that the humans found someone her age to be attractive, but she was also concerned that she might have just signed away her own planet. She turned to her advisor, the one who had spoken on the way up, and she said, You know, you were right. I did need to take care of talking to the humans. Although, as she lifted up the contract and looked at it more, I think this might work out well. In fact, I'm looking forward to seeing some of them in the throne room. And then she realized what she had just said. Everyone realized what was going on as while they were having their meal, and this time the humans were very, very careful on what they prepared to make sure that it matched what they needed for digestive concerns. She was sitting right next to one of their guards. One of these guards simply excused himself for a moment, and then another one, who was constantly looking for a place to sit down to enjoy his meal, actually asked if he could join them. This one was not wearing a full uniform 
but instead was only wearing a single shirt and what they call shorts. It had the name of their own unit across the front. She couldn't quite read it, but it was explained to her that he had just got done doing physical training, or PT as they call it. She was amazed at this. She looked over at this young man who had just sat down and simply nodded saying, Ma'am, as a shine of respect. She didn't understand this, but she was told that this was normal in human society. As he sat there, she looked close at his arms, the very, very defined arms. She looked down at the very defined legs and realized that they weren't lying at all. These humans probably could do many, many things that her own males probably couldn't do. Not to mention, her own males, being subservient to females, were not exactly ringing her doorbell just by the looks of them. In fact, she was very impressed at the physiology, but she wasn't the only one. She caught many of her own male subordinates looking up and down the human females at how their proportions were much more defined. She realized that dealing with the humans might be much more interesting than she let on. As she finally landed on her planet, she led on and let her cabinet know to not release any information until they have time to refine everything. If they let everyone know what had happened, she would be completely embarrassed. And yet, she almost did want to let them know. Within a year, the humans had helped out to build many areas where they could mine their resources. They brought in more equipment so that their agriculture went up as well. Their new engineering helped them jump ahead almost an entire generation within that one year. It was amazing. And now, now she looked across and she saw one of the humans as he worked. As the human worked, he had to take off his outer covering. It was very warm that day, reaching around 29, 30 degrees Celsius, which was comfortable for her, but for humans it was a little warm, and many of them had taken off several layers of their outer clothing just to try and cool themselves off. As she watched, this one human went over and, during his break time, grabbed a bucket of simple dihydrate monoxide and dumped it over himself. With this, she asked the guard, Could you go retrieve that one? I wish to speak with him.